do all three verses, Jay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Greenfield Christian Church. I see some fresh faces here. Welcome to all of you. Today is our hymn sing. We have been looking forward to this for a long time, so I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to those of you who are viewing us from your homes. Uh, I hope you join in the singing, even though we may not hear you here. We gather today in joy and thanksgiving. Our worship service will be hymn-based throughout. There will be no sermon. And uh, what we celebrate is the end of summer and all the blessings that we have enjoyed. We give thanks today for this service to Jay Byers and Larry McGuire, who have designed the service. And as you know, it takes many people and their participation to make such a service possible. And you will see all their names given in the bulletin. Please remember to sign the pew pad so we remember your names and can maybe contact you the next time we have a hymn sing. Um, we usually start our service with getting the business of the church out of the way, with making announcements. 
Our first announcement is that children's ministry, children's worship, is being suspended for one Sunday because we want the children to sing with us. Um, and there are a couple of other announcements as well. Now that I have your attention, <laughs> first off, thanks everyone for coming yesterday, celebrating Caroline's birthday. I know we had a, a wonderful time and slept great last night. <laughs> Secondly, if you have not looked at the calendar, Riley Festival is right around the corner. The men will again be doing the parking lot project, so we are looking for volunteers. <laughs> You may wonder, well, why would I help if I'm not part of the men's group? Well, first off, we don't have that many bodies, and I'll be running around with a red shirt on all the time, so uh, I'll be passing by but won't be able to have any shifts. Uh, but we've done several projects like helping the sock drive. We went and purchased a shopping cart full of uh, socks. We donated to Feed the Future at Greenfield Central Schools to help the kids out. We donated to the soup kitchen, and we've worked on several projects uh, the most recent being Trez Gregory. <laughs> yes. So what we would ask, Joe Smith is leading that, but if you would help, we would certainly appreciate that. And if you have any upcoming projects, we'd certainly appreciate your help and look forward to helping you out with those projects. So thank you. I know there were a few other announcements. Good morning, everybody. I want to remind everybody, as he just mentioned, the men are sponsoring our music for next Sunday afternoon in the parking lot. Trez Gregory, that was a backup singer for Brooks and Dunn, um, is going to be just the end of summer uh, bash in the parking lot music, and we're going to have food trucks. Um, so from 7 uh, 4 to 7 next Sunday afternoon. Bring your lawn chairs in the parking lot and enjoy an evening of uh, music and fellowship. Uh, as our church's job for this, pretty much everything's handled, so we just want everybody to come and be neighborly and uh, do some fellowship with uh, visiting people and our regulars. So uh, just come and enjoy. Um, if you have any questions or anything, let me know. Otherwise, just keep it in the calendar next Sunday afternoon. Thanks, Jeff. Are there any other announcements? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just want to report on our first awesome August activity, which was the chocolate walk. Di and I chaired it, and we were so thrilled that we had 250 people walk through the doors and bombard our chocolate mousse, which we got great compliments on. But the best part was when people walked in here, they went, wow, I often wondered what it looked like in here. So we, again, we don't make money off this project, which is a shame, which we would certainly welcome your donations for it but what we do hope is that it welcomes people in and maybe they will join us and we had a few people ask about our service so um, anyways every volunteer that helped that night thank you very much it was a success if there are no other announcements I am going to depend on Jay to lead us into worship
Thank you, Jay. Did need something? Before joining me in the call to worship, by the way, I'm Steve Foreman, and I'm on your program today. I'm curious, how many of the rest of us have been occasional backup singers for Brooks and Dunn? <laughs> I can't wait. That's going to be a lot of fun. Please join me in the call to worship. Uh, should be in your bulletins or on your screens, and if you'll please stand if you haven't already. This could be an exercise. I could ask you to sit down again, but I'm not going to. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Declare God's glory among the nations, God's marvelous works among all the peoples. Now please uh, welcome Charlie Smith. He's going to lead us uh, in the first song, It Is Well With My Soul. And again, please welcome Charlie Smith. Okay, I was going to say, hang on. So um, we're going to be doing a countdown of hymns here. Uh, my understanding is what happened, they pulled the congregation and we had, uh, we took the top 10 vote getters and we're singing through them in reverse order. Uh, this hymn written out of tragedy, Horatio Spafford. Uh, just to give you, since we're not preaching today, I just want to give you a little history on, on the songs that we're singing. Um, Horatio Spafford wrote this. Uh, he went through great tragedy. Uh, his, uh, he lost a son in 1871 from scarlet fever and then lost his business in the Great Chicago Fire that same year. The business recovered um, and then they decided the family needed a vacation. He stayed back in Chicago to deal with some business. His wife and four daughters went ahead. Uh, he intended to meet them there. Uh, their ship collided with another ship on the way there, sank in 12 minutes. The four daughters perished. The wife survived. She. Um, telegrammed him and said, uh, saved alone, what shall I do? Um, thought that that would be a good sermon title someday. Um, but uh, so he immediately set sail for England then and um, the captain of his ship, knowing what had happened to Horatio and his family, uh, summoned him when their ship that he was traveling on was over the spot where the other one sank. And uh, he uh, then retired to his cabin and wrote this, the, the lyrics to this song. Uh, so as you sing it and you get to that second line where it says, when sorrows like sea billows roll, know that that's what he was looking at at the moment he wrote this and, and why that line probably made this song. Uh, they were put to music by Philip Bliss in 1876, and he wrote a lot of well-loved hymns, Almost Persuaded, Hallelujah, What a Savior, Wonderful Words of Life, uh, and he was a personal friend of D.L. Moody. Um, and he named the tune that he wrote for this song after the ship that went down with the daughters, uh, the Ville de Harve. Uh, that's the name of the tune. So now we will continue.
Thank you, Charlie. In unison, please follow me in the invocation. It's on the screens and also in your handouts. To you, Lord, we sing praise. We pray that the melodies that we sing are inspired by our love for you. We praise that this love is evident each time that we sing. We pray that genuine worship to you is our main focus when we sing rather than musically. We, we pray, amen. The scripture reading today is a short one, but very important. It's Psalms 95, 1 and 2. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Special music today is Love Lifted Me by Charlie Smith. And uh, again, Charlie, thank you so much for being here today. Try not to take any of your stuff here. Okay, so this one, if I had to pick, is on my list at the top ten. Um, this song, and we're going to have the words on the screen for you all to join in to sing with me, but uh, my mother sang this song to me when I was a baby, did the same with my sister, and I now do the same with my uh, kid, um, and I will do the same with my new one that's coming here soon. But uh, she now knows every single word of this song, my kid does, and she sings it. I've got a video of it, if you want to see it, uh, find me after the service, but... Uh, so she knows she's watching at home. She was so excited when I left that she was going to be able to hear this song today. So um, we're going to do Love Lifted Me. And again, all, everybody join in with me.
else could help Love lifted me Love lifted me Love lifted me When nothing else could help Love lifted me Thanks for joining me in that one. Okay, so we're going to continue our countdown now of the top ten hymns of all time, as chosen by you guys, um, with two more. We have number nine now, uh, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Uh, it was written by Elisha Hoffman and Anthony Showalter, uh, and it is based on the passage of Deuteronomy 33, 27. Uh, the eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Deuteronomy 33, 27. Uh, it's also known as What a Fellowship is another uh, title for the hymn. Uh, Showalter conducted singing schools and was an elder for the First Presbyterian Church in Dalton, Georgia. Been there. Uh, scripture inspired him after hearing the news that the wives of two of his former pupils had both died and were buried on the same day. Uh, and he wrote a letter of sympathy to each of them, and that resulted in the refrain. He, he included... Um, leaning on the everlasting arms in there, the, the refrain that he ended up writing for this song. Uh, he wrote to his friend then, uh, Elisha Hoffman, explaining that he had a, a chorus but no verses. And then Hoffman replied back with the rest of the words for the hymn. And then Sam Duncan, one of uh, Mr. Showalter's students and also his nephew, was assigned as the class assignment to write the music for the song. So that's what you hear here. Um, Hoffman, the, who wrote the rest of the song, served in the Union Army in the Civil War, then attended Union Bible Seminary, and was ordained in 1868, and he was the first music editor of the Hope Publishing Company. Uh, he composed more than 2,000 composition, compositions and almost 50 songbooks, and uh, some, ones, uh, some of his, his works that you may have heard of, Are You Washed in the Blood, Down at the Cross, and Is Your All on the Altar? I don't know that one, but that was on there. Uh, then our number eight song, I'm just going to go ahead, we're going to do both of them back to back. Uh, In My Heart, There Rings a Melody uh, was actually written by um, a, uh, um, a Hoosier. He was born in Indiana, in Bernie. His name was Elton M. Roth, and he was a Mennonite, and he was baptized in the Wabash River. Um, he was one of the most well-known musicians of his day and contributed over a hundred hymns to the church. He, uh, according to him, this song came to him while assisting with evangelism in Texas in uh, 1923. Uh, one hot summer afternoon, he was walking uh, to the cotton mill just outside the town, and on his way back, um, it was oppressive heat. He saw a church on a corner. The door was open. He went in. Nobody was in the pews. Pastor wasn't even in his office. And everything was quiet, and he said, with a lingering sacred presence, I walked up and down the aisle and began singing. In my heart there rings a melody, and then hurried to the pastor's study to find some paper. And I drew a staff and sketched the melody, remaining there for over an hour or more to finish the song, both the words and the music. That evening, I introduced the song at our, at our evangelism thing, and I had more than 200 boys and girls sing it at our open air meeting, after which all the audience joined in singing. And he said he felt that it, his whole being was transformed into a song. So these are our next two. Oh, my God. 
us join together, as is our tradition, in saying the morning prayer. Almighty God, we come before you with hearts filled with gratitude and joy. We acknowledge your presence with us and celebrate all that holds us steady in our faith as followers of Christ. We use our voices, all of us, to praise and glorify you today. Accept our celebration of all that is good, all that has gone well in our lives and in this church, and all the hope we share that binds us together as one church family. We remain mindful in our joyful hymn sing that there are people and places who are frightened, who suffer deprivation, who see not to, nothing to celebrate. We pray for a spark of hope to reveal that you are there with them. Accept our prayer on their behalf, that you hear our cries and you respond through people and in mysterious ways. Grant us all a stronger faith. We hold in our hearts today those on our western coast who are threatened by Hurricane Hillary. Have mercy on them, God, and preserve them all. Bless this gathering and accept our prayer through song. You know us inside and out. You know our needs. Jesus Christ inspires us to live abundantly. Accept the joyful noise we make today as praise in his name. Amen. Our Father, who? Yes? Don't interrupt me. I'm praying. But you called me. Called you? I didn't call you. I was praying. Our Father, who art in heaven. There, there, you did it again. Did what? You called me. You said, Our Father, who art in heaven. Here I am. What's but, on your mind? But I didn't mean anything by it. I was, you know, just saying my prayers for the day. I always say the Lord's Prayer. It makes me feel good. It's sort of like getting a job done. Well, all right, go on. Hallowed be thy name. Hold it. What do you mean by that? By what? By hallowed be thy name. It means, it means... Good grief, how should I know what it means? It's just part of the prayer. By the way, what does it mean? It means honored, holy, wonderful. Ah, oh, that makes sense. I never thought about what hallowed meant before. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you really mean that? Of course. Why not? What are you going to do about it? Do? Nothing, I suppose. I just think it would be rather good if you got control of things down here the way you have up there. Have I got control of you? 
well, I go to church. That isn't what I asked. What about your bad temper? You've really got a problem there, you know. Stop picking on me. I'm just as good as some of those hypocrites down at the church. Excuse me, but I thought you were praying for my will to be done. If that is to happen, it will have to start with the ones who you are praying for it. Like you, for example. Oh, all right. I guess I do have a few hang-ups. Now that you mention it, I probably could name some others. So could I. I haven't thought about it much until now, but I really would like to cut out some of those things. I really would like to know how to be free. Good! Now we're getting somewhere. We'll work together, you and I. Some real victories can be won. I'm proud of you. Look, Lord, I need to finish this up here. This is taking a lot longer than it usually does. Give us this day our daily bread. You need to cut out the bread. You're a little overweight as it is. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What is this? Here I am doing my religious duty, and all of a sudden you break in and remind me of all my faults. Well, praying is a dangerous thing. You could end up changed, you know. That's what I'm trying to bring across to you. You called me, and here I am. It's too late to stop now. Keep on praying. I'm interested in the next part of your prayer. Well, go on. I'm scared to. Ah, uh, scared of what? I know what you'll say. Try me and see. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us. Well, what about that uh, Peter Brown? See, I knew you'd bring him up. Why, Lord, does he told lies about me and he cheated me out of some money? I swear I'll get even with him. But your prayer, what about your prayer? I didn't mean it. Well, at least you're honest. But it's not much fun carrying around that load of bitterness inside, is it? No, but I'll feel better as soon as I get even. Have I got some plans for old Peter? No, you won't feel any better. You'll feel worse. Revenge isn't sweet. Think of how unhappy you really are. But I'll change all of that. You will? How? Forgive Peter. Then I'll forgive you. Then the hate and sin will be Peter's problem and not yours. You may lose the money, but you will have settled in your heart. It doesn't sound easy, but deep down I know it would be worth the effort. Thank you, Lord, for helping me work through this. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For nine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Moving on in our countdown now, uh, we are going to sing three songs back to back this time. Uh, number seven, as chosen by you, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Uh, I didn't have to research this one. I knew the story behind this song, and I love it. Um, Joseph Scriven is the uh, writer of this song. He was born on September 10th, it's day, 1819, in Ireland. Uh, his parents were well enough off to send him to school, get him an education. Uh, so he went to Trinity College in Dublin, where he graduated with a bachelor's degree. He fell in love with a young lady, e eager to spend her life with him, but the day before their wedding, they were riding horses, and uh, she fell from her horse, hit her head, uh, while they were crossing a bridge on a river, and she drowned in the water below. He was unable to swim, and he just, he, he stood helplessly on the other side watching. <laughs> to overcome his sorrow, he began to wander, uh, and by age 25, his travels had, had brought him to Canada, near Port Hope. Uh, he became highly regarded by the people in that area. I think uh, they even referred to him as the Good Samaritan of Port Hope. Uh, he would often give clothes off his back uh, to the people there. And he had vowed a life of poverty. He, he basically was, was penniless. Uh, he tutored some of the local children. Um, 
he met another wonderful lady who was going to marry him, and they were excited to be married. She got pneumonia and, and died as well. Um, and uh, he helped out the widows and sick people. Uh, no, no wages. Um, he would never accept anything. And one occasion when he became ill, a friend was visiting with him and discovered a poem near his bed and asked who had written it. Uh, and Scriven replied with, the Lord and I did it between us. Uh, his mother, who was also sick uh, back in Ireland, um, he wrote it for her to, to hopefully bring her comfort. And he'd never intended for anyone else to see it. He obviously didn't have the means to go and take care of her to get even to get there. Uh, ironically, uh, Scriven's life ended when he drowned in a Canadian lake in 1886, and a, uh, an attorney and composer named Charles Converse wrote the musical setting that we use today for that song. Standing on the Promises is number six in our countdown. Uh, Russell Kelso Carter is the author of that. Uh, he was a native of Baltimore, Maryland, and he was an excellent athlete, uh, and he went to the Methodist Holy Camp, and that had a deep impact on him. Uh, he went to the he, teaching at the Pennsylvania Military Academy, he taught chemistry, natural science, civil engineering, mathematics. Um, he wrote several novels. He raised sheep and he practiced medicine. I mean, this guy did a lot. He composed this song when he was teaching at the military academy. Uh, he was a professed Christian most of his life, but it wasn't until a crisis that occurred to him that he really understood it, the power of the Bible and its promises. At age 30, his health was in critical condition and physicians could do no more for him, so he turned to God for help and healing. He knelt and made a promise that um, healing or not, his life was finally and forever uh, fully consecrated to the service of the Lord. It was from that moment that the written word became alive for him, and he began to stand upon the promises of healing. Uh, and so he lived another 49 years after that. Um, so he wrote that several years, this song, Standing on the Promises, several years before his healing miracle, but it's fitting where, where he came from. And then number five, surprised it's this low in our countdown, Amazing Grace. Um, this is a very familiar story, you all may know it. John Newton is the author of this hymn. He was uh, the captain of a slave ship and um, bringing slaves from the African coast to the, to the uh, New World. And um, basically, he traded all that in, became a Christian, wrote this song, and now it's one of the most beloved hymns of all time. So let's move on with our countdown.
time we would have been moving on to a special music by Brad Herndon but um, he is having tendonitis and is unable to do the song that you see listed in your program which is to God be the glory so Jay and I decided I'll just we'll, I'll sing it you guys can sing along too we haven't practiced it so we'll, we'll see how it goes but uh, so let's just sing uh, to God be the glory together page 72 in the hymnal if you need it To God be the glory, great things He hath done. So loved He the world that He gave us His Son, who yielded His life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may come in. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! If you need it. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus apart. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He has. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He has. Continuing on with our countdown, we reach number four and number three. Number four is In the Garden, uh, written by C. Austin Miles. Uh, and he, uh, in March 1912, he wrote this song. His hobby was developing film. And he'd actually built a dark room in his house to do that. Uh, and while waiting for that process to complete, uh, he figured out he could read the Bible in the dark room. I don't know how that happened, but whatever. Um, he picked up his Bible, and it had fallen open to ch John chapter 20 and uh, the story of Mary coming to the garden to visit Jesus after the resurrection. Um, and he imagined that he was present with them there, and he finally, um, it, it, it occurred to him, uh, well, when his thoughts returned to the business of developing the film, he was gripping the Bible tense and vibrating, he said, uh, and he recalled that that in the garden thing is not an experience limited to the happening almost 2,000 years ago, but it is the daily companionship with the Lord that makes up a Christian life. Uh, and in the inspiration of these moments, he wrote a poem. And he later said that the words and phrases to this came very quickly. And that same evening, he composed a musical setting for it. And in doing so, we have this hymn now. 
uh, Just a Closer Walk With Thee. Uh, in my research, this showed to be one of the most requested songs at funerals, um, which is odd because in the garden you hear a lot too. And I thought we were having a homecoming Sunday today, not a home going Sunday today, but that's okay. Um, but the author of this, the origin of this hymn is unknown. Um, but there was a song in 1885 called Closer Walk With Thee that was very, had a similar chorus and it was published. Some refer to it as a folk song, um, but the lyrics to that particular song, not necessarily this one, were attributed to Martha J. Langton and music to William Kirkpatrick. So found a national audience in the 1930s, but it is unknown in its origin. So let's continue. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now we're going to move into a time of communion. Uh, so if you would stand and join me in the communion hymn, I'm going to eat at the welcome table. Number 424. You may be seated. We celebrate that special time we wait for each week, coming to the table as one family in faith. We celebrate an open table, which means everyone is welcome. So come forward, there is no preparation needed. Come forward and be part of this invitation extended to us by Jesus Christ, who asked that we do this in remembrance of him. We remember the night before he died, when he gathered with his disciples and he broke bread and he gave it to them and said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the covenant. My blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Truly I will tell you, I will, no I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us proceed. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this wonderful homecoming day where we can come together to celebrate the life of your son, Jesus. We honor him by remembering the sacrifice he made on the cross for our sins, the bread representing his broken body and the cup, his blood, that was shed on our behalf. May we go from here refreshed with a purpose to let our actions and words demonstrate the love you have for everyone. Amen.
We have a special doxology today. It's a song that was uh, first brought to us by David Edwards when he was our pastor here. And uh, I know you all are very familiar with it. Um, we added a third verse to, for today because it's homecoming Sunday. And we do have so much to be thankful for. And in fact, I'm gonna invite Mark Owen up here to finish this off with me. He's gonna come on up too. So, um, but we're gonna do uh, so much as a doxology. We have so much, 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 so much to thank God for. We have so much, 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 so much to thank God for. We have salvation 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 to thank God for. We have so much, 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 so much to thank God for. We have so much, 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 so much to thank God for. Here's our special verse. We have our heritage to thank God for. 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 We have so so much, 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 so much to thank God for. We have so much, 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 so much to thank God for. We have each other. To thank God for, 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 we have so much, 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 so much to thank God for. We have so much, 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 so much to thank God for. Shall we pray over our offering? Lord God, you are the giver of all good things. We have so much. And your word it makes it clear that every good and perfect gift comes from you. Just as you multiplied the fish and loaves, we pray that you would multiply all of these gifts and offerings. May they accomplish more than we could ask or imagine. And thank you, Lord, for this homecoming. May we continue to glorify you as we fellowship and sing. In Jesus' name, amen. The final two on our countdown. Uh, the Old Rugged Cross was written in Albion, Michigan in 1912. Uh, and there's a monument up there if you want to go see it at the guy's house. And then number one, Joyce, How Great Thou Art, has its origins in, um, in Sweden in 1886 from a poem there. So let's join in our final two songs for our hymn sing today. Stood an old, old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross, where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners. 
now for our final hymn, I have decided to follow Jesus. During the singing of that hymn, if there is anyone here who would like come, to come forward and profess their faith for the first time, perhaps seeking baptism or renewing your faith, or simply transferring membership to join us, that would be a good time. I can meet you at the table as we sing the song.
the benediction, followed by a prayer before the meal, and in between, Larry will make an announcement. Go now, all of you, with your hearts filled and your ears ringing to share the good news that we are loved. God loves each one of us, and for this we rejoice. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Have you had fun today? This has just been phenomenal. We're going to do it again, so keep coming back. We have lots and lots and lots of food back there, so please, doesn't matter whether you brought anything or not, please stay and eat. Lots of goodies. Thank you. The prayer before the meal. We give you thanks, God, for the meal we are about to share. We give thanks for the abundance of food and fellowship, for the thoughtfulness and labor that is lovingly given. Bless our food that will nourish us in every way, and bless us all, body, mind, and soul. Amen. Amen.